Hi everyone. What I want to share with you today is the tools and the bit of kit that I've compiled over this past year for my power wheelchair maintenance. That is to say, I have these tools here, so if I have a breakdown and I need help from a friend to get the wheelchair fixed immediately, like not paying the overnight or evening premium, as well as during holidays when you would pay a premium for a service call, I can have a friend come over and using the manual on the internet, a basic repair can be completed without spending an excessive amount of money. Some of the basic tasks I can do myself with seating that works for my body, but even if you weren't in the situation where you could do some of the work yourself, having the kit handy would be an opportunity to maximize your independence and peace of mind. I'm not going to tell you that all of these tools are what is officially recommended by a service technician in the industry. What I will say to you is this is what has worked in a practical perspective. So I just restocked the first item tonight. These are plastic gloves. So the reason for the plastic gloves is to provide a layer of protection so oils, grease, lubricating fluids and penetrating oils won't absorb into my body. So just a quick lesson related to this. If you think of someone who's stopping smoking, you'll see them wearing a patch. So like, I don't know, something on their shoulder, there's half a dozen placements for it. The patch delivers the medication by absorbing it through the skin. So when you get your hands covered in oil and grease, you're laying those chemicals into your body. So those gloves are to protect my health and keep me safe. A very good investment. So since we're on the topic of this of the gloves, I've used liquid wrench. This is the penetrating oil of their brand. Worked really well for me. Um, in fact, this stuff goes on clear and it was dripping out rust colored to get a stubborn bearing out of the wheelchair that had really seized into place. The normal lubricant that I use is this lithium grease. The reason I use lithium grease is that it is not water based, meaning I do a lot of driving on the side of the road and sidewalk. I need to make sure the lubrication is there so we're not in metal on metal situations. I'm not going to tell you that there's anything wrong with WD-40 because I also have it in my toolbox, but there's a time and a use for WD-40 and there's a time and a use for the lithium grease. Okay, this is my good old set of Allen keys. I bought these at a big box store for around $12. I found chrome plated Allen keys at the dollar store for $3 and I bought them. 
um, they, the chrome plated stands up a little bit better. I've also got these are um, good old Phillips. That's the plus screwdriver. And then this is the flat head. And I've got a set of wrenches and socket set that are for my wheelchair. You need to know if your wheelchair is imperial or metric when buying your wrenches. I don't keep the wrenches right in with my wheelchair equipment because I use it for other things in my life as well. But it's one of them that I'll grab when my wheelchair needs maintenance. Okay, right here. Here we go. So these are the two bearings that my wheelchair uses. This size here is for going around the corner. And this size here is for what makes the wheels go round and round. So the ones that make the wheels go round and round burn out fairly quickly. That's why I've got, I'm going to say about 10 extra on hand right now. Um, I find that the ones that make the wheelchair turn the corners last about a year. That is to say about 3,000 kilometers or just for quick math roughly 2,000 miles. I'm very careful not to be out in the rain and I do my utmost to protect them from the moisture. Your usage is going to be very subjective to how long your bearings last. What else do I have? Oh yeah, okay, these are just a handful of screws. You'll see some in here that are square. There's an example right here. Okay, so what these are is for bolting accessories to the frame of your wheelchair. I've added LED lighting to my wheelchair. That's one thing these could be used for. It would be also handy to have a few extras if you've got maybe an oxygen canister and your screws are starting to rust you could go and replace them before it's going to be a chore to do it because of rust you know really taking a hold like it does as it advances okay next thing uh, this is liquid electrical tape what I use this for is I've had little cracks on the odor sheeting of the wires so this reseals it and protects it for the weather the electrical system on the wheelchair is so important I'm glad to have this you could consider having heat shrink tubing with this electrical tape that's liquid lets you put it on without having to take off the adapters that bring the power to the wheelchair motors or connect the electricity to the wheelchair's controller. Large screwdriver, why do I have it? It's because it's what makes taking the bearings out of the little wheels, you know, off of these guys, um, so easy. You know, just kind of in and fish it out and it's out again. The wheel bearings aren't press fit. I have a rubber hammer as well. Um, I, yeah, here's my rubber hammer. It's right here. So I put them in with this and then I take it out with the large screwdriver. Now when you're working on the wheelchair wheels, you need to keep yourself safe. I have two of these. They're just two by four wood. You can see here that I've got one screw going in here and the other screw on the other side going in so they're not going to separate unless they're taken out with a drill. This is to keep the wheelchair off the ground and safe. Really important that you don't get a crushing injury when you're 
doing maintenance on the wheelchair. An alternative option would be a hydraulic jack of some sort, like what you'd use on a car that would kind of raise it up as you use the handle. I have an airfield cushion on my wheelchair. It needs to be checked about once a month to make sure there's enough and correct air pressure. So this is what's used for it. And it's the same as blowing up an air mattress if you've ever gone camping. Tool brush. Or toothbrush, I mean. And you can see by how dirty this is. This is how I clean the wheelchair. That is getting sand and grit off of the frame of it, off around the motors, and generally cleaning it. So I, I personally use vinegar and then you know in and brush it off and in and just takes about half an hour um, that toothbrush works really well I'm doing some research uh, to make a lithium battery for my wheelchair that I'm expecting to last 40 years these are how I'm going to connect it when I make the charger using likely what will be a solar panel charger so I just have these on hand or when I'm ready to as I continue to do my research and investigation um, I've got these in my toolbox what are these it's chicken pie or shepherd's pie tins I bought them at the dollar store the bake on plastic coating was coming off of the hubcaps on the wheelchair. For my specific wheelchair, it's structural. They're bolted directly to the wheelchair's axle. I don't want them going rusty, so I put paint stripper in those containers and then use the paint stripper to get the rest of the baked off uh, coating off and then I spray painted the tires or the, the hubcaps um, primer because it's um, it's metal that had a little bit of the zinc missing from being galvanized and then four layers of blue paint and four layers of clear coat turned out really well looks extremely sharp I'm not so concerned about the looks of it I, I do care I don't want to downplay that I care the reason I spent the money was keeping my body safe I would not have done it if there wasn't the risk of the hubcaps rusting and then causing the metal to fracture. Always handy to have are some cable ties. So I've got nice long ones so it's easy to get them on. Then I just take zipper um, scissors and cut them at whatever length is needed. These were also at the dollar store. I spent around two dollars on them. Oh, okay, so these are for my air filled cushion. They're patches. So let's say I get a sewing needle into my cushion, it makes a hole or a woodworking splitter. I can patch it myself and be up and running. All I need to do that is a water dunk test. So I physically can't do the dunk test myself, but it means having a friend come over, send them upstairs to the bathtub and put the cushion under water and let me know where the leak is. And when you have a leak in a Rojo cushion, it's quite obvious and the air just comes streaming up the air bubbles. The same idea as with a fish tank aerator. Uh, this is a homemade bearing puller that I made myself. So it's used to unseat the press fit stem bearings. I've made a hydraulic press also. It's obviously not kept in my toolbox, but this is to unseat the bearings that are press fit into place. I've got a few lengths of Velcro. The cushion for my wheelchair is velcroed into place. If it needs replacing, then I've got extra here. Oh yeah, here's another bag of assorting nuts 
bolts and washers. If something needs wearing out and replacing, I've got it handy. Uh, the stem bearing flutter kit for my particular wheelchair is a large size. A neighbor a few doors down that's a contract that helps me with the maintenance of my wheelchair has given me this. So if I need to make a quick adjustment to stop cast or flutter, basically what looks like a fish tail flapping around, I've got this with me. You know, when I drive myself to do my physiotherapy, the drive takes about 20 minutes or 25 minutes, depending on traffic, then the same back home again. It's a long time to be having the wheelchair uh, have a wheel fluttering, so there is a stool there that I can make the quick adjustment. It takes me a few minutes to do the transfers, but it does stop the wheelchair from jerking around and keeps it much more controllable. Now I've got some electrical tape in here. Again, I want to protect the electronics of the wheelchair. So right now I've got solid inner tubes or solid tires for the powered one, but this is a what you'd get for a bike kit to remove the inner tube if it's punctured. So one shoves in, then you move it a little bit and you keep on going around to dislodge it. So I've got these to change a flat tire if I go back to inner tubes in the summer months. Magic marker. I'm very particular in attention to detail. And I keep good solid notes about my disability. I've just added LED lights as I said earlier. So it's important to make notes of what's for where especially when you're adding your own electrical components. It's probably going to void your warranty on your wheelchair, but if you're doing it, you need to be able to keep track of what's for what. Um, this is an Allen key. It's reminiscent of my Allen key kit. Probably fell out of it, to be honest with you. I've got a handful of screws and right here, this is a nylon insert locking nut. I've got a bunch of these uh, kicking around. These are great for vibrations, hence the wheelchair. You'll find them, or I've added them to the flutter kits to help prevent the tension from getting off. Because when you're on the road, the wheelchair is just getting pounded. And last thing, I guess this has fallen off one of my one of my lubricating cans. That's the hose for the one of these sprays. Yeah, it's off my penetrating oil. Okay, and finally the empty toolbox. So this is what I use for a toolbox. Someone asked me if I could use it, and I thought to myself. I'm probably going to end up with a set of tools for the wheelchair. It'd be sure handy to have it. Oh, I see one more that I've missed. So this is three quarter inch H clamps. And with this little bit of uh, metal tubing, uh, it's used for natural gas piping, I can seat a bearing with this. It's an alternative to the hydraulic press that I made. So it's an extra tool for my tool kit. I don't normally keep it right in the tool box, um, but on my shelf, but that's what I've bought it for. Very good investment. And I had them cut the pipe to the size just to make it a little bit easier and more manageable, especially since I'm dealing with mobility challenges and transfers are hard for me. Anyway, that's a look at my wheelchair tools. A uh, bunch of them would also work for maintaining a scooter. And one, one more thing that I just thought of. This is my digital multimeter. So there's a rating in the manual for my wheelchair that says if the battery reaches this many volts, it's 90% worn out, 80% worn out, etc. So I could take a battery reading and know where my wheelchair batteries are. Why this is important is so that I know how far I can travel 
can I make it to physiotherapy and back home again without running out of batteries? Or maybe a better example for you would be grocery shopping and back home again, or maybe going to church and home again, or coffee with a friend. Anyway, that's a look at my tools. I hope it'll help get you thinking. I'm all for helping enable and empower people for their independence, and that's really why I made this video. The funding for my wheelchair goes through the disability pension I receive, but it doesn't take an awful lot of looking in the media to see that the funding's drying up, so I am trying to be proactive in taking care of myself. I've got a few friends that are contractors. Another great friend, uh, Mike, he's willing to come help me if I, sh if I can verbally tell him what needs to be done. So having the tools here is helping keep me ambulatory with the wheelchair, of course, and making the best of my life. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this. Bye for now.